The real power of NMR spectroscopy comes about, well, first of all, because we do know how many protons are involved in each transition because there's a, a proportionality between the intensity of the transition and the number of protons. But much more important is the fine structure that's observed. All of the spectra I've been talking about for the past few slides, I've been emphasizing that these are low-resolution spectra. If you look under higher resolution, then we observe that these transitions, here it's shown for the iodoethane spectrum, and we see that the, uh, the methylene is split into four bands and the methyl is split into three bands. This fine structure is clearly giving us more information. The question is, where is that information coming from? Well, we know that these changes in the chemical shift arise through changes in the magnetic field experienced by the nucleus. Well, we've already taken into account the effect of the applied magnetic field, and we've already taken into account the magnetic field due to the electrons. So where is our new magnetic field coming from? Well, the only place that it can come from, actually, is the other nuclei in the molecule. So this fine structure is the effect of the magnetic field of one nucleus on the magnetic field of an adjacent nucleus. We've got two adjacent protons here, and those two adjacent protons are generating their magnetic field. But we've said that they can be spin up or they can be spin down. When it's spin up, it generates a magnetic field in this direction, going around here. Instead of spin up, if we have spin down, the field lines are going to go the other way around. So the field generated by this nucleus is going to influence the field experienced by this nucleus, because you can see its magnetic field line going around there. And it can do that in one of two ways. Either it can reinforce it, or it can oppose it. So it's going to shift it either up or down. And this process we call spin-spin coupling, and in this case we would expect it to be a doublet, shifted up or shifted down, because of the two possible spin orientations associated with the proton. So we can look at the case of the effect of these protons, this pair of protons on the CH2 group, on the three equivalent protons on the methyl group. As I've drawn them there, both of these protons have a spin-up orientation. So both of them are going to contribute a magnetic field which, let's say, opposes. But that's not the only way we could have drawn those relative spins. Here we are with them both up, so that's called a downshift in the applied field required for resonance. But I could have drawn them pointing the other way, both spin down. In which case that would be an opposing field and we'd get a shift up in B. Or I could have drawn them one up and one down, in which case they would cancel each other out and there would be no effect. So that line would be in the middle. Of course there's only one way I can draw them both up and there's only one way I can draw them both down. But there are two ways in which I can draw them up and down. The left one up and the right one down or vice versa. It's because of those three possible orientations that the line associated with the methyl group is split into a triplet. And it's because of the, the weight associated with those orientations. Okay, the weight associated with the up-down orientation is two compared to one for the two up or two down. That's what gives us the intensity in the distribution in this fine structure. So the intensity distribution we see is one, two, three. So now let's have a look at the effect of the three methyl protons on the two methylene protons. As drawn here, we have all the protons' spins pointing up. The other thing we can do is have the three spins pointing in the opposite direction, all pointing down. But we've now got three protons, each with two possible ways of being oriented. So we expect to have two times two times two, eight possible orientations. And the other six are taken up here. We can have either two spins up and one spin down. And there are three ways in which we can arrange for that to happen. So the weight of that spin arrangement is three. Or alternatively, we could have two spins down and one spin up. And again, there are three ways in which we can do that. Both of those will have a net effect on the magnetic field that is seen by the CH2 protons, okay, because they don't cancel each other out. They're 2, 1 or 1, 2 weighting. So one will lead to a small shift down, and one will lead to a small shift up in the applied frequency. So the methyl protons are going to split that methylene signal into four lines, and the weighting is going to be 1, 3, 3, 1. The splitting that we see between these lines is called the coupling constant because it's the coupling of one's family of protons to the adjacent family. Okay, the other thing to notice is that we've now got our first set of splittings were split in the pattern 1, 2, 1. We've now got one more proton and we're splitting them in the pattern 1, 3, 3, 1. And those of you who are familiar with Pascal's triangle will recognize that as lines 3 and 4 of the Pascal triangle. 
And that's very characteristic of our splitting patterns. Our splitting patterns, their number and their intensity can actually always be determined by drawing out the Pascal triangle.